The lights have been burning throughout the night in this pleasant surfside home of Mr. and Mrs. Goldman. March 28, 1966. Aaron and Sally Goldman were awakened by an armed intruder looking for $10,000 the couple supposedly had hidden in their home. When he didn't find the money, he took Danny Goldman, telling the parents that if they wanted their son back, they would need to come up with $25,000. In the words of the kidnapper, all he wants is money, and all we want is our son safely returned. The kidnapping terrified the quiet beachfront community. Suddenly, families were locking doors, and kids weren't allowed to walk to school. Reporters camped out in front of the Goldman home. The waiting continues, and so does the speculation about Danny's condition, about the kidnapper's motives, and about what police are doing in the case. Danny's high school sweetheart, Sharon Lloyd, stood vigil outside the house, often holding a picture of the two of them. As those first days passed without contact from the kidnapper, the Goldmans promised Danny's abductor they would cooperate. We have already collected in excess of $5,000. In excess of $10,000. Donated about $15,000. We have $25,000 in bills waiting to be delivered to you. But days turn to months, and months to years, and years to decades. And Danny has never been seen again. The Goldman family house is just down the street from where I live now, and it's not far from where I grew up. Former Surfside Mayor Paul Novak was almost eight when Danny was kidnapped. There never was a recovery of Danny, dead or alive. There was never an arrest made. And there's very few cases like that in the history of the country. Novak made it his personal mission to solve Danny's disappearance following the death last year of Danny's mother. How horribly sad that she actually passed away without ever getting any answers. Novak believes the $10,000 that the gunman was looking for was money the Goldmans were supposedly gathering to ship Danny out of the country so the boy wouldn't have to sign up for the draft the next day when he turned 18. And he told them that, you know what I'm here for. I'm here for the money. When no money was found, it turned into a kidnapping. An attorney by day turned dogged detective at night. Paul Novak dug into the case discovering long lost reports and statements taken from two career criminals. One pointed a finger at a fellow named Joe Cacciatore. Chicken Cacciatore, as he was known, was an accomplished thief and burglar. He did match the description of the intruder given by the parents. But how would Chicken know the Goldman family might have $10,000 hidden in the house? Well, Novak and his team of Surfside sleuths uncovered reports from a second informant identifying another member of the kidnapped team, a former rum runner and criminal named Charlie Lloyd, the father of Danny Goldman's girlfriend, Sharon. It would seem remarkable that police couldn't have uncovered these connections at the time. But as Novak learned, the Dade County Sheriff's Office, as it was known back then, was notoriously crooked. We had several ranking members of the Sheriff's Department indicted for burglary, conspiracy, and public corruption. The man who would have overseen the Goldman investigation was eventually indicted in an unrelated case six months after the kidnapping. And guess who he was indicted with? Joe Cacciatore for jointly committing burglaries. So what really happened to Danny Goldman? Because of Novak, Miami-Dade police have reopened the case, and they have questioned Sharon several times in recent months. In his search, Novak found a decades-old Surfside police report in which a bartender claims a woman who reportedly identified herself as Danny Goldman's girlfriend came into his bar and told a story about how the kidnapping went wrong. There was two men, one of them went into the house, took Danny out, and they brought him to another location. And at that other location, he saw somebody he recognized. And that everyone involved got scared and decided that they had to kill Danny at that point. Novak said Danny's body was supposedly cut into pieces and dumped into the Florida Gulf Stream. There's never been a funeral for Danny. There's never been a, a memorial service for Danny. There, the, the, the prayers that Jewish people say for the departed were not said. He was just gone. 